John likes second lives in Indiana, you know. Kevin likes the Dodgers and talks on the radio. John plays games on Xbox and on his Nintendo. While Kevin runs around LA with his mustachio, it's the Lack of Genius Podcast. In your ear holes at last. They don't know they're Mars from Venus, that's why it's the Lack of Genius Podcast. Hey, Kevin. Episode 30, John. Yeah, we've hit episode 30. We are, uh, we, we do a pre show, right? And mm-hmm. you have to be a patron on our Patreon page. So just a quick plug of that to get our pre show. And I realized during our entire pre show, we talked about a lot of things, but one of them was not that it's episode 30, which is a little bit of a milestone. So. Um, yeah. I guess. I mean, episode 26 was our halfway <laughs> milestone, and now uh, here we are with a, a number that ends in zero. So I guess those are worth acknowledging. Gotta love those even numbers. <laughs> we're focusing on what we're calling outdoor adventures. Yeah. Which is pretty exciting for me. Uh, it is. This is uh, the way I kind of pitched this idea was sort of like, what's a what's an amazing feat that we've had in our lives, and and specifically we decided to look at outdoor adventures. And so, what are what are you going to be uh, talking? These are adventures that we've actually been on that each of mm-hmm. us have been on. So, what do you got, yeah. John? Uh, the Boundary Waters up in Minnesota. Okay, see, and in I Canada. You you mentioned something about uh, not to, I won't spoil too much, but about canoeing in Minnesota, mm-hmm. and I I've never heard of Boundary Waters. I don't know if this is. It, would you say it's a pretty well known thing at least regionally where you are, or I think more than regionally, it's a fairly well known thing. So there's a good chance there's some like a neighbor of mine. If I said the Boundary Waters, they'd know what it was. I, I think if you say like Boundary Waters Wilderness Area or the Boundary Waters in Minnesota. Just boundary waters, like regionally, boundary waters definitely people know. Outside of the Midwest, you know, maybe specify Minnesota. Gotcha. Well, I'm not surprised that I haven't heard of it because I, you know, I lack a lot of genius in a lot of things. But uh, <laughs> I'm exci- I have so many follow up questions, but I'm not going to ask them because I wa- I'm assuming they're going to come up. I will tell you that I am doing Mount Whitney, which is uh, well. Now I got to remember what questions I wrote because I don't want to spoil <laughs> anything. It is this is this comes up in a question, but it's not the answer. This is Mount Whitney is the highest peak in the uh, contiguous. United States, the lower 48. Did I say that word right? Contiguous. Contiguous. I've only ever seen it on paper. I've never said it out loud. (laughs) Contiguous. Contiguous United States. The lower 48, it's the highest peak. And about, let's see, it was 2015. That's seven years ago. My brother and I, along with a group of friends, we climbed it. We we hiked it up. We backpacked. Uh, it was a great experience uh, that I will get into more details on. The questions will kind of lead us there. But this was a major accomplishment in my life to get to the top of this peak, to stand on the top. And so I'm going to go into that via our quiz. Cool. All right. Well, let's uh, let's tidy some things up first. Sounds good. Tidy up before we go, go any further with the show, show. Tidy up before we go, go fix our mistakes tonight. I want to get it right. Up. Oh, I know for sure I have a tidy up today. I'm, I'm actually very yeah. embarrassed about my tidy up. I told you I had one, but I didn't tell you what it was. That's and true. The reason I'm so embarrassed. So tidy up section for those who are new is where we clean up mistakes that we've made in prior episodes. I just realized I actually have a brief second one as well that might be fun to share. <laughs> but um, the, the, the reason I'm so embarrassed about this one is because it's related to Mighty Ducks. And I have been going on and on about how obsessed I am with Mighty Ducks. Anyone who's seen me in person in the last two weeks, I've had a conversation about Mighty Ducks about. I'm so obsessed, (laughs) and I made a mistake that I caught myself in the episode, and I caught it before I listened back, and it was like cringeworthy listening to me say it. I introduced the Bash Brothers as Fulton Reed and Dean Porter. Dean's last name, his character name is actually Portman, like Natalie Portman. Uh. Dean Portman, nah, it's an honest mistake. It's it's not that big a deal. But for me, who bleeds the uh, the mighty duck blood, <laughs> the oils of the feathers of the mighty ducks, oh man, I hated doing that. So Dean Portman is the character, and uh, and I, I hang my head in shame in this moment. So it happens. Tidied that up. I had a conversation not related to mighty ducks with uh, with Grayson, who's one of our fans, a coworker of mine, a friend of mine. He, uh, this was many episodes ago. Okay, so this was our, in fact, this was our episode 26 extravaganza, our, our half year special. Okay. 
And one of my questions had to do with how many times I said the word ping pong in our table tennis episode. And it ended up being, I believe, seven and a half times that I said that I said ping pong. Well, while I was explaining how many times I said ping pong, I made some comment like, I bet I've said ping pong more times in this episode than I did in the actual <laughs> episode. Turns out right. Grayson went back and counted, and I did. I was correct. I said ping pong eight and a half times in the extravaganza episode. I said it seven and a half times in the table tennis episode. So that is, that's a shout out to dedication of fandom yeah. for you, Grayson. Well done, my friend. And, and now he gets to go back and listen to this one yes. and count how many times you said it in this one yes. to see if you said it more times in this one than the and previous And then, ones. well, once he does that, we'll tidy that up and it'll be our yeah. ongoing, it'll be like looking into a mirror. It'll be our ongoing mm-hmm. uh, celebration of ping pongdom. Yeah, and I actually just kind of thought about a little tidy up as well, or uh-huh. just a fact, I guess. We recorded last week's episode on the 2nd, January 2nd. Yes. We did the movie trilogies. I did Lord of the Rings. The author of the Lord of the Rings is J.R.R. Tolkien, mm-hmm. whose birthday happened to be January 3rd, which I didn't realize oh, until after we would record it. So it was kind of serendipitous that wow. his birthday was the week that we talked about Lord of the Rings. The, the stars were aligning on, on January 2nd slash 3rd for us. That's very cool. That's very cool. Well, thanks for bringing up that fun fact. It's a, yeah. it's a wonderful author and creator in our world, and it's great that we got a chance to honor him with a quiz. It's time to take a quiz or two. Like a genius podcast doing this for you. You may fail, but it ain't no lie, baby. It's quiz time. Don't really want this quiz to be tough. I just want to pass one because I failed enough. It might sound crazy, but it ain't no lie, baby. It's quiz time. I like that we got a good little rhythm going, John. I mean, 30 we episodes, you, you would hope that we have a little rhythm going, but we're, we, we've we gotten to know each other well, uh, not mm-hmm. just not just through facts about one another, but just like, okay, this is a good, this usually Kevin talks here, or usually John talks here, or, yeah, I don't know, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's been a, <laughs> a, a I know you on a very deep level, is what I'm saying now. <laughs> Let's jump in. Mount Whitney. Well, and Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you know, we may want to let, you know, people know that at least my questions aren't necessarily about the trips that I've taken. Gotcha. It's just about the area. I, I don't know if that's how yours is, Kevin, or not. But, okay. Well, uh, you can count on me asking a bunch of questions about your own experiences and feel free to share them yourself because, yep. you know, I think that is one of the things that I know I want to know, like, okay, this is cool, but how was it for you? And mine have right. a, mine actually, they definitely incorporate both. So you'll get a little bit of here's general facts and here's my experience. So we'll start with kind of the, the basics about Mount Whitney. This is a, uh, at, okay. I'll, I'll read the question for you. At 14,500 feet, Mount Whitney is the highest mountain in the t- contiguous United States. So Alaska, which is not in the contiguous states, has several peaks higher than Mount Whitney, does Hawaii. Hawaii, another state not in the contiguous United States. Yes or no? Not a true or false. It's a yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see here. I mean, I know not too long ago they had snow in Hawaii. I mean, obviously because they're so you know close to the equator, in order for that to happen, it would have to be at a fairly high elevation. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I'm going to say yes. Get to say yes that Hawaii yeah. has a peak. Taller than Mount Whitney, mm-hmm. 14,505. John, that is incorrect. Uh. Incorrect. And interestingly enough, I wrote this question thinking that the answer was yes. <laughs> um, turns out there, Hawaii's highest peak is, uh, I'll probably slightly mispronounce this, M- Mauna Kea. Mauna Kea, two words. And it's about a thousand feet shorter than Mount Whitney, thirteen thousand okay. eight hundred three. This is actually this uh, Mauna Kea, as you may not be surprised, is actually a dormant uh, volcano. But there is there's all kinds of different facts and statistics for like h- measuring mountains, and one of them I think is called peak prominence. And I'm not going to do a very good job of explaining it, but I believe peak prominence means like how far the tallest point of the peak is to mm-hmm. the next tallest thing. It's something like that. And uh, Mauna Kea in Hawaii actually beats Mount Whitney in that. Um, So uh, the first list I saw was like, wow, it has one taller. And then I looked up the actual fact. So there you go. There's my Mount Whitney fun fact uh, that incorporated Alaska and Hawaii. Cool. Oh, for one, John. Sorry, dude. But let's let's uh, let's hop into Boundary Waters. And uh, we we actually have a couple people watching or at least one person's watching my my uncle who is 
sadly having to watch from isolation in Oregon at the moment. Oh but. man, I'm sorry. I'm glad we can. We. Uh, I'm glad slash. I'm sorry that you're stuck with us in isolation. <laughs> <laughs> it's giving him something to do. Good, good. Thanks, Uncle Dale, for being on right now. <laughs> so we've talked about this a little bit now that the Boundary Waters or, or the Boundary Waters Canoe Wilderness Area is the full name of it. So approximately how many acres wow. does the Boundary Waters cover? 11,000, 110,000, 1.1 million, mm. or 11 million acres. This is great. This is very on theme to a question you did last week where you did the same kind of thing with sixes. It was either 600, 6,000, 6 million, or 6 billion. And now we got the 11s. You got 11,000, mm-hmm. 110,000 acres, 1.1 million, or 11 million acres. Now, can I ask this question? And if it comes up later, yeah. it's more of a, about the boundary. Water. Does the boundary refer to like a border? Like, is that, is that yeah. why it's called? It's between, I'm guessing between North, uh, North America, between America and Canada. <laughs> Yeah, These are the yeah. boundary waters between our two nations. And so mm-hmm. the question is, how many acres does the boundary waters cover? And that's interesting. So I know it's, I know Minnesota, I don't know if it spans across to other states. Nope. It's only in Minnesota. It's only in Minnesota. I, and Canada does have a corresponding park on the other side of the boundary. Oh, cool. But this number does not include reflect that. Interesting. Interesting. That's very cool to know. I do have a general idea of how much an acre of land is, but it's like, I don't know if like choosing 11 million acres is like a, dude, what were you thinking kind of answer. I, I, I do feel like 11 million is, is too high. I'm going to choose 110,000 acres. That sounds like a lot to me without being too insane. So I'm going to choose 110,000 acres. Ah. Incorrect. What is it? Would you like to? T- it's uh, 1.1 million. It was the or middle just one. Under, yeah, it's just under 1.1 million. I think it's 1.092 million acres. Okay, but that doesn't fit with the theme of the 11s. <laughs> right. Well, I, I figured, you know, at that point, Going up in you know an extra eight thousand acres isn't going to be that yeah, much. It's not going to make a big difference. Things. Yeah, so one point um, one million. All right, it's a big area, and but it's actually an area inside of a national forest. So to get to the boundary waters, you actually have to go through Superior National Forest. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Um, and so then this wilderness area is inside of a, a forest, and that forest is you know even bigger. And so you know this is more of a personal follow up. And again, if you mm-hmm. have if you had plans bringing this up later, but you you have canoed these waters, right? Mm-hmm. Canoed. I have. When, when did you do this? You were in high school, I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, well, middle school and high school. I've done it twice oh. uh, with scout with Boy Scouts. I think in '98 and then '02. Okay. '03. Um, but yeah, uh, I've been up there twice uh, for a week at a time each time. Oh my gosh! So did you? You would? Would you then be canoeing along these ri- rivers, these waters, and then like uh, camp- lakes? Yeah. And then camping along the way, so you'd have all your gear with you and yep. all that. Oh, that's so cool, John. How many people do a canoe? Uh, two. Okay. I and mean, you could do three depending on you know who it is, but or how much gear you have. Yeah. But yeah, no, normally two to a canoe. But yeah, you canoe across the lake and get out, carry everything across the portage, and then get into another lake and go across it. Yeah. What an experience. And you did it twice. That is, that does sound like an amazing feat, an amazing outdoor feat. Yeah. I mean, there's 1100 lakes or so within that area. Oh my gosh. And you no. went to all of them? No, just- <laughs> <laughs> A small handful. But All right, John. Uh, well, we're both over one. So we're even mm-hmm. playing ground. I'm going to ask you number two on yeah. Mount Whitney here. Okay. I'll explain more about this as, as we go. But what is the name of the packet of items each Mount Whitney hiker is given for packing out their own human waste. Yes, you heard me correct. You pack out your human waste. Is it the poop pack, the wag bag, the crap trap, or the smell kit? I believe it is a wag bag. You sound like you have some familiarity with this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're going to lock it in? Yep. Wag bag is... Correct. Yes, you've heard of it. I was worried you were going to know what this is. Have you ever pooped in a bag, John, is my next question for you. Uh, I've not had to use a wag bag. Um, (laughs) I have had to dig holes. Yes, Um, I've dug many a hole. I've dug many a hole. And actually, in the Boundary Waters, there are actually campsites that you have to stay in. You can't just camp wherever you want. And so at each of those campsites, they actually have a throne. Basically, it's a fiberglass toilet with a toilet seat on top of it. 
uh-huh. that just goes into a hole and there's no walls. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. I get so it. So you can actually get some pretty good views while you're yep. just sitting there. That's unbelievable. Yeah, I've had a, I, it sounds like we have a shared uh, experience mm-hmm. here with some of this stuff. So uh, Mount Whitney is in Inyo National Forest, I-N-Y-O, Inyo National Forest. And it used to be that at certain campsites along the way, there were outhouses, but the human waste started becoming a major problem, especially mm-hmm. because so much of the terrain is rocky. It's not super soily. Yeah. And so you cannot go number two anywhere in that area, that forest. So they give you these WAG bags. And WAG is actually an acronym that stands for Waste Alleviation and Gelling. G-E-L-L-I-N-G, Welling. Waste Alleviation and Gelling. And inside of the WAG bag, they give you they give you this giant bag that, I mean, the best way I can describe it is it could hold like a, a small child in it. It's a huge bag. <laughs> it's got this powder in it that's meant to absorb moisture. And mm-hmm. then they also give you a little thing of toilet paper, which is hilarious, and a little uh, wipe, wipey thing. And then yep. um, aside from the bag itself, they give you another Ziploc bag to put it in. So it's double bag. They also suggest that you bring your own bag. I did not get that suggestion, so I did not bring my own bag with me. <laughs> and I very much used a wag bag. I'm proud to say I also uh, put together a video of it that I did find the other day, and I'm going to put up on our Lack of Genius YouTube page. So feel free to check that out. Um, you don't see any poop, I promise you. There's no, you don't see me actually pooping. It's basically just the setup. You get to see what the wag bag looks like. It's, I believe I say in the video, it was one of the strangest experiences of my life having to go <laughs> in this wag bag. So that is something that if you, if you have a goal of climbing Mount Whitney, just know that's something you're going to maybe, maybe practice pooping in a bag now so you can be prepared for it. <laughs> All right. Well, you got that one right. Well done. One for two. Uh, and I'm 0 for one. Yep. So in what year did it officially become a wilderness as we know it today? Mm. 1935, 1959, 1963, or 1978? And you, this means the, uh, I forget the full name of it, but the- The Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness. Became known as a wilderness area, meaning it's a, like a protected area. Okay, so I know, oh, I, 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 I have very vague facts in fact, they're not facts because they're very big about <laughs> uh, like the national park system being mm-hmm. started. And I wonder if that would correspond with it. I <laughs> I don't know my president's well. For some reason, was it Truman? I don't. Uh. Nope. No, no, no. It was. We've talked about this before. It was one of the Roosevelt's. Mm-hmm. It was. Uh, yeah, it was one of the Roosevelt's. Teddy. Yep. It was Theodore Teddy Roosevelt. I, so again, this is me assuming, look at me, look at me having a little bit of knowledge and your, your, your uh-uhs have been helping me. So thank you. Your uh-uhs and uh-uhs. <laughs> um, I want to go with 1935. I feel like that would be the general time frame that I am sort of hovering around. And so I'm just going to go for it, man. I'm going to lock in 1935. Oh, Incorrect. Man. How did I do? How was my logic? Was I anywhere in the, in the ballpark? It, it, no. <laughs> <laughs> It's always no. It's always no. So I actually reworded the question a couple times to get it to where it is now. And the answer is 1978. Okay. The part that is the, as we know it today. In 1978 was the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness Act, which is what established a lot of the regulations and everything that we have now. And that's, that was probably a Minnesota state act then, or is that a federal? Federal. This is, this is, this is all federal land. Wow. Um, so that was in 1978, and that's where, you know, what put in a lot of the stuff now. But, you know, like I said, it is inside of a national forest, which means it's actually r- the whole area is ran by the uh, U.S. Forest Service. But it was actually back in 1902 when Minnesota first started setting land aside to not be used for logging. We know a lot about that, by the way. Yeah, we do. We've learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and so then, you know, in the, in the 20s, roads were being built into the national forest and, you know, a lot of tourism and, and things like that. Uh, and then Truman signed an order, an executive order, which prohibited aircraft from flying over it below 4,000 feet. It was then officially called the Boundary Waters Canoe Area in mm. the 50s. And then there was the Wilderness Act, which established wildernesses in, in 1964. And that's when the national wilderness system came into play. Okay. Um, so, and then 78 kind of got everything to where it is now. As we know it today. Okay, got it, yep. got it. No, that's fair. You, you worded that fairly. Um, 
Here's a question I have because it literally mm-hmm. has the word canoeing in the title. Yep. And that's what you did. Is that just the most popular activity that it happens is. there? It's yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, there, there's hiking and, and fishing and stuff. And, and in so. terms of even water, I mean, there's probably people who take kayaks, rafts, other oh, things. Yeah. But, but canoeing I mean, is I, I, I don't think rafts would do well. Um, okay. I mean, the, there are rivers, but not like Mississippi or the New River or things like that, that you would do rafting on. Yeah, you're not doing like uh, rapid, rapid, crazy no. rushing down a, a river. You're on a, no, you're I mean, on a lake I mean, and you're pulling yourself along with a paddle. All right, John, uh, you're stumping me so far. I'm over two. You're one for two on Mount Whitney. Let's hop into number three about Mount Whitney. Mm-hmm. The most common trail for summiting Mount Whitney is appropriately called the Mount Whitney Trail. Approximately how many miles round trip is this route? And this is the route that I took. How many miles round trip is the Mount Whitney Trail? 13 miles, 18 miles, 22 miles, 25 miles. So one question I have, and I, and I apologize if you said this, uh-huh. how long, how many days did it take you? I have not said this yet. I did it in two days. We camped and stayed overnight. Days? Yep. Okay. And, uh, you know, I don't know if this helps you or hurts you, but uh, there are, you, you can do it in one day. There are people who mm-hmm. do it in one day. My oh, brother yeah. did it in one yeah. day once. So, and, and did you kind of just do the camping like halfway or did you get, get up and then come down like a third of the way? We, uh, it was one night of camping. We, we actually went maybe a third of the way, if even that the first night, just because that's where the base camp was. And then okay. summited all the way up and then came all the way back down. So the majority of the hiking was done on day two for us. Okay. I'm going to say 18 miles. 18. Again, if you're yep. listening at home, 13, 18, 22, or 25 miles. And you're going to go with 18? Yep. That is incorrect. One higher. 22. 22. Yep. It was 22. So it's about 11 miles. I think it's like 10.9 something there, 10.9 something back. So about 22 miles. And um, yeah, we, I, I kind of was based on my research because I couldn't remember a lot about this trip, mm-hmm. um, but we, we got, we did get an overnight permit. By the way, you have to go through this whole lottery system uh, in the yep. spring to be able to go in the fall when we went. It's in the winter actually uh, is when you do the lottery. And luckily one of my brother's friends, she reached out to him and all these other friends and uh, had them do the lottery. I guess they had an extra spot and they invited me and I was all about it. So yeah, 22 miles. So Day one, we went, we only went about six miles. Now it was, it was all up. It was, it was a heavy Mm -hmm. hike. And I remember being exhausted by the end of it, but we set up camp because there is a, there is a base camp at the bottom. And we went, we were maybe just about a mile shy of that base camp. If even that stayed the night and then woke up at like three in the morning, got headlamps on and started trekking up the mountain. It's pretty sweet because you get to see the sun come up. Some of the most beautiful views I've seen in my life was, was that morning uh, we got to the top, spent a little bit of time up there, and then came, w- what I did the math was 16 miles all the way back down. And it was the closest I felt to what I've seen people describe, like running a marathon is like, where your legs are just, you don't even notice that you're moving your legs because they're just going on autopilot and they're so tired. Going downhill for, you know, basically 11 miles, it wreaked havoc on me. I was so t- I was in pretty good shape, but I was just like, wow, this is pretty crazy. So... So yeah, nice job. Oh, well, you missed yeah. it. Sorry, not a nice job. Oh, yeah. Nice nice job to me on accomplishing this feat is what I'm saying. I was yes. just giving myself a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see if I can get one right here so I don't get another O for. And, and it's a true or false since okay. we didn't do one last week. So true or false, you are allowed to use motorboats in the wilderness area. Wow, true or false. And this is, it's interestingly enough, kind of what I was asking. I hadn't thought about motorboats and maybe that even points me in the direction of where I want to go because I don't envision any kind of motorized boats. I feel like that would I feel like that would take away from the overall ambiance of the wilderness area. Now I can imagine it having a lot of waters that would be fun to be motorboating on, but you are allowed to use motorboats in the wilderness area. I'm going to say false meaning you are not allowed to. So I'm choosing false. Incorrect. Um, Dang it. You can, huh? In or on certain lakes. You can. Okay. So they have regulations um, in certain areas. Yes. And depending on the lake, actually, there might be limits as to how powerful of a motor you can have. 
the two times I've been up there, we actually went out on, we started on the same lake both times. Uh, it was called Seagull Lake. And that lake, actually, you're allowed to have boats with motors as long as it doesn't exceed 10 horsepower. But you asked, you know, what are the, besides canoeing, what else is big up there? Mm. Fishing. Oh, yeah. Until you take a little motorized boat out and right. settle in. And, and they'll just go fishing for the day. And, That's cool. And so on. It's only on certain lakes. I mean, and it's like from what I'm seeing here in the official pamphlet for the Boundary Waters Trip Planning Guide from the United States Department of Agriculture. Can you print one of those out and send it to me, by the way? I could send you the link. <laughs> Dang, that's not as fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, there, there's only a handful of lakes or a couple of handfuls. Where the motorized boats are allowed. Yep. Okay, got it. So I'm over three, man. I, I, <laughs> I'm scared, man. I'm scared. I might get another <laughs> 0 for five, but I'm going to be optimistic for now. You're one for three heading into number four about Mount Whitney. So at about two and a half miles south of the summit, so before you get to the very top, there's a series <laughs> of switchbacks that are just heading up this mountain. How many switchbacks does that specific series contain? So not how many switchbacks on the whole thing, just this series of switchbacks right before you get to the summit. Is it 91? 95, 97, or 100? I don't know if you know the answer to this, but how much elevation are you gaining on those switchbacks? Oh, do I have... Um, no, I don't have that information. <laughs> that's, that's okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with 100, just because it's an even number. 100 switchbacks leading up to, uh, leading up to the summit. You locking it in? Yep. That is... <laughs> Correct. Sorry. It's 97. And there's a little bit of, I don't know if controversy is the right word about this. When we were on this hike, I remember it being 99, being told it's 99 switchbacks. And I even counted them. In fact, it was a very good way to keep my mind busy while I would, mm -hmm. you know, keep me working towards something. And these switchbacks are relatively short. You know, they're, it's like, because you, we are gaining a lot of elevation. I would guess it's a pretty significant right. amount for a short amount of time. But I just remember them being very sh kind of short and relatively steep. In my counting, I think I got to like 98. And then when you get kind of to the top, you sort of lose track of, okay, wait, is this still a switchback? Does this turn? <laughs> so it, it was really hard to say. But in my research today, there were a few places that said it was 99, but the majority and including some official sites said 97. So that's why I was, my, my last choice was going to be 99, but I didn't want there to be any controversy. So I made it 100. Right. This also, fun fact, was like when we got up at three in the morning, we basically start right at the switchback. So the campsite is right at the base of this. And what was very cool, and I, I will share this as well. I will post another video on YouTube that I put together of basically my entire expedition. So from uh, <laughs> not including any of the wag bag fun, but basically here's me hiking, here's me camping, here's me. And so we go up at night with our headlamps um, up, up these switchbacks. And when you get kind of halfway through, you look down and you just see these little lights. They look like little twinkling <laughs> lights all heading up the mountain. It was so, 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 so cool. It really was like a magical experience, as exhausting as it was. But 97 yeah. switchbacks. Yep. Okay. So you mentioned how your brother had to basically play the lottery to be able to get, you know, a permit and everything. Yep. Yep. And Boundary Waters has permits as well. There's different permits depending on what you're doing. My guess is your brother may have gone to the same website. You can get your permit at recreation.gov. Yeah, I'm pretty sure and that was it. Yeah. Like it, it like at least for boundary waters, um, you need permits for between like May 1st and September 30th. Okay, yeah. Are the 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 quota permits. So basically that's when they only allow so many people in. Um, and it. those would be like for you know the week long canoe trips and things like that. However, there are also what are called non quota permits. And so the question I have here is how much does a non-quota day permit cost? Free, uh -huh. $5, $50, <laughs> or $100? Wow. Okay. So I'm trying to just sort of um, use experience I've had where, you know, they're like local mountains here, Malibu, Santa Monica, and there are certain mm -hmm. trails that do have fees and they're, they're relatively affordable. You know, it's like, it's probably about like five bucks. Sometimes it's even just for parking, you know, free would be sort of the, I don't know, kind of the surprising answer, but I got to tell you, it's what I'm leaning towards right now. I think 
you know, a non-quota day permit, especially if you're, you know, you're just doing a hike. I can't imagine being charged $100, even 50 sounds way too steep. I, I want to go with where it's a wilderness area. It's, hey, we want to encourage outdoor use. It's not a crazy packed area or day. I'm going to say free, John. F-R-E-E, free. Show me what I got. Yeah, Correct. free, free is the best. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, this was another one that, I, I thought it was one thing, and then, you know, I, I put down all the answers, and then I'm like, I need to reword the question a little bit, because okay. at first I just put, how much does a, a permit cost? And then I, I realized, no, there actually are costs for permits, and so, in general, it's 16 bucks per person per trip. Okay, which that's um, not bad either. For, for exactly, the, yeah. yeah. You know, and that's 16 bucks is for an adult. For mm -hmm. kids, it's eight bucks. So, I mean, it's still cheap. I mean, it's and not I, expensive know, at I, all. I don't necessarily expect you to know the answer to this, but my, you know, my guess would be that these fees go to, you know, upkeeping the land or paying the staff or maintenance mm -hmm. on things. So, you're, you're really putting into, you know, keeping this place, you know, oh, yeah. I, that would yeah. be my best guess. Yeah. Good to know. Good to know. All right. Well, I just I just tied you up with that and guaranteed I'm not going over. So what? We're both one for four, right? Going to the last question. Yeah. Oh, this will mm -hmm. be fun. All right. So this is more of like a personal experience. Um, at the top of Mount Whitney, there's like there's a cool little guest book. There's this weird little house thing, and there's a guest book inside of it, and we all we all signed it. It's pretty cool to be. It feels like you're part of history. Like yeah, I made it to the top. What did I sign? in the guest book at the summit of Mount Whitney. Did I write, this is the highest I've ever been. Follow me on Instagram at Kevin Does Stuff. Me and my mustache made it next to a drawing of my mustache. Or I have to pee. I, I'm really leaning towards the uh, me and my mustache made it. <laughs> me uh. and my mustache made it. <laughs> next to a drawing of my mustache. Again, it's this is the highest I've ever been. Follow me on Instagram at Kevin Does Stuff. Me and my mustache made it next to a drawing of my mustache, or I have to pee. Uh, I'm I'm going with the mustache. Me and my mustache made it next to a drawing of the stash. That is yep. incorrect. Ah. I did have the mustache. I've had the mustache almost ten years, so I did have the mustache then. I it was the first one. This is the highest I've ever been, which is a play on uh you know being on drugs, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is ironic because I'm not a drug user. But um I just I was so. Oh my gosh, getting to the top of that, again, you can head to our YouTube channel and see mm -hmm. my Mount Whitney full video. And you know, maybe you won't watch it, so this isn't spoiling anything, but I get to the top and I'm there's literally, I can see it in me because I know me. There's like this sense of euphoria that I have. And I say, man, I just feel so freaking good. And I was like, <laughs> it was like walking on clouds and I get to this guest book and I'm like, eh, I'm just gonna write something silly. <laughs> and, I wrote, and you do see it in the video. That's what reminded me. I was like, I totally forgot that I wrote that. <laughs> um, and the reason that I use the choice I have to pee is because I very specifically recall having to pee when I got to the top. And what's ironic is you do these 99 switch, 97 switchbacks, mm -hmm. and then you do, you're on the backside of the mountain and you you do these kind of long, it's more of like a long, slow crawl up, not so much switchbacky. Right. And it's all rocks and it's all very like visible for everybody. So there's not really <laughs> any good places to pee. In fact, I, I did go a few times and I'd go like right behind a rock and hope that somebody wouldn't come up on the trail behind me. <laughs> and, and then when you get to the top, everybody's just kind of hanging out. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's nowhere to pee. <laughs> like, where am I going to pee? And I don't, I honestly don't remember what I did. I'm sure I just ran off somewhere and figured yeah. it out. But um, yeah, it was it was quite an accomplishment. And, I, and the other thing I remember is I'm so glad I did it when I did. Again, 2015, I was 30 years old. So you can you can yeah. do math. You know, that's right around, you know, 20, they, what do they say? 28 is your athletic peak. Like I was still in, I'm in good shape now, but I pulled a hamstring today playing ultimate Frisbee. You know, I'm an old man. I'm so glad I did it when I did it because I only did, it's going to sound like I'm bragging and maybe I am, I only did one training hike leading up to this and it was mm -hmm. only a few miles. It wasn't that much. So doing 22 miles round trip, yeah. I kind of like killed it going up that hill. Me and this other uh, young young woman on the trip who I only met going into the trip, her name was Kristen. Her and I just kind of started slowly breaking away from the group. And it's not like we were racing. I wasn't trying to make it, but we just felt yeah. good. I We just like, let's keep going, man. I don't want to lose this momentum. <laughs> and we got up there in pretty good time. And I, it's, uh, you know, again, I don't mean to brag. 
I really don't. I'm just very proud. I looking back, I'm like, man, I, I want to be young again. That was awesome. <laughs> uh, so a big accomplishment of mine. I'm very excited to share those videos on YouTube. I would be honored if you checked them out. And, and uh, if you're, you know, feeling motivated and have questions about Mount Whitney, I can do my best to answer them or maybe my videos will, but uh, I, you can hear the excitement in my voice. I'm very proud of this accomplishment. I highly recommend it to anybody looking for an adventure. Cool. All right, okay. but we, got, we got business to get to. Am I going to win or are we going to tie? Good question. Let's find out. What is something you cannot do in the Boundary Waters? Oh. Drive a boat. Uh-huh. Fly a drone. Wow. Hike. Okay. Or use a cell phone. Well, I want to say that you've probably given some of these answers away uh, because I know that you can drive a boat because you have motorboats for fishing. And unless there's something tricky about the wording, I know that there are hiking trails. Unfortunately, I kind of probably drew that out of you. So I think we're between fly a drone and use a cell phone. Initially, when I saw this question, I thought use a cell phone. But that seems like a, well, <laughs> here's what's interesting is maybe it's not a rule that you can't use a cell phone, but maybe there's no service. So you literally cannot use a cell phone. Uh, but you can take pictures with a cell phone. I got to choose fly a drone. I would guess that there's probably something about you know, not disturbing the area, not having things flying around. I could, I bet you get some amazing shots with a drone, but that is what I'm going to choose. I'm going to say you cannot fly a drone in the boundary waters. Yeah! Correct. And it's actually not just the boundary waters. Uh -huh. um, it's, I think, any national park or wilderness area. That I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. And that's probably something yeah. they had to do within the last few years. Well, maybe, I guess drones have been around a long time, but they commerci have, um, commercially, they've really taken off, obviously, in the last yeah. 10 years or so. Yeah, I mean, it's it's maximum penalty is $5,000 or six months in jail. I think you can get a permit if you're wanting to, like, film it for a commercial reason. Okay. You know, for a movie or something like that. And actually just filming video in general if you're doing it for a commercial purpose, you have to get a permit. I would bet. Um, yeah. I mean, that's national yeah. land. That's federal land. Yeah. Um, I will say, John, man, uh, I knew nothing about the boundary waters. And as, as I said at the beginning, and I'm, I'm all about it, man. When we, when, <laughs> when I go visit <laughs> and we play hide and seek and we, uh, I chop wood for you and we go to the D and D convention <laughs> and we go to the troll hole in Canton, Ohio, we're also going to head up, up, to Minnesota. Yep. We're going to head up to Minnesota and we're going to do some motorboating and some canoeing and some hiking. <laughs> and it's going to be so much fun. Yeah. And Uncle Dale mentions in the, on the, the Facebook feed, mm -hmm. he mentioned the loons and hearing loons in person is both eerie, but beautiful at the same time. I bet. Like it's a very haunting sound. That's but... a, that's a bird. I was going to say they're like a mm -hmm. duck, right? Nope. They're, they're not a duck. They're different than ducks. Do you want to hear the sad thing about what comes to mind when I hear a loon is, mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember this, but Tom Green back in like the late nineties had a song called the bum song. And I remember mm -hmm. this because I watched it on TRL all the time. And he, for some reason at the end, he just started shouting the loon, the loon. <laughs> and you hear a loon making its weird noise in the background. Yeah. And unfortunately Tom Green well, is the one who educated me on loons. I mean, if, if you ever go to Canada or you've talked to someone from Canada, they might refer to their $1 coins as loonies. That's right. Yeah, I, th I think I knew that. Yeah. Do you know why they do that? Is it, is it because the loon is on it? Yeah. That is great. And, and the, their $2 coins are called toonies. Just because it's clever? Yeah. That's funny. Oh, well, Canada does everything better than us. Actually, there might be two loons on it now that I'm thinking about it. Oh, that would be but. even better. Let's pretend it is. <laughs> well, John, uh, I, I won an episode, so I, I ruined your streak you of one wins. I think I did some math last week, and I believe that was my 14th win, and I believe you've had 11. We'll double check that sometime. We've had four ties. But uh, thanks for your, uh, your excellent partnership in this Mm -hmm. Lack of genius podcast experiment that we have going on. I'll give a thank you to my brother, Robert, whose love I'm still trying to earn for uh, <laughs> including me on this trip so that I could have this experience to begin with. And uh, we'll be back next week. Loggers, we appreciate you so much. Tell your friends. Let's help. Let's uh, spread the word about this podcast. And uh, we're, we really want to yeah. reach more ears and get more input. So don't hesitate to hit us up anytime on our socials. Say hi to us. And uh, we look forward to chatting again next week. Yeah. And, and uh, if you if you want to, you don't even have to watch it. Just go like and subscribe on YouTube. Yeah. And so. I, I'm, we are definitely going to start providing more content on YouTube. So that's a place for you to interact with us a little more. So uh, yep. feel free to say hi, watch me poop in a bag, and we'll see you next week. <laughs> it's the Lack of Genius Podcast. In
in your ear holes at last. They don't know they're Mars and Venus, that's why it's the Lack of Genius Podcast. Maybe practice pooping in a bag now so you can be prepared for it.